The Puck Portfolio with Andy McNeil. Hey, hey, welcome to The Puck Portfolio. I'm your host, Andy McNeil, and I'm here on weekdays to provide NHL projections, picks, betting advice, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season. This show is sponsored by North Star Bets, good old Canadian sportsbook. Check them out via the link in the description below. They offer a lot of different NHL markets, and uh, they also offer odds on the next day's NHL games. One of the first sportsbooks to post odds on NHL games, so check them out via the link in the description below. Drop a like on the video, subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel, helps out a ton. Don't forget to tune in on Wednesday as I'll be previewing all of Thursday's NHL games from a betting perspective before anybody else. But uh, on today's show, we'll be uh, we'll be looking at Tuesday's schedule. Talked a little bit about that on Monday's show, brief show on Monday, and uh, briefly looking ahead to Wednesday's slate. Not a whole lot going on on Wednesday, but uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's talk about it. You see the projections up on the screen. We'll start with the Canucks and the Avalanche. So uh, embarrassing loss for the Vancouver Canucks in Minnesota on. Monday, Vancouver led 5-2, but after taking four consecutive penalties, the Wild scored six goals in five minutes and 42 seconds in the second period to take an 8-5 lead. It was the fourth fastest six-goal burst in NHL history. The Wild's first four goals came on the power play, of course, with the the Canucks taking so many penalties. Uh, But they also added two even-strength goals as well. The two teams combined for four more goals in the latter part of the third period with the Wild adding two empty netters to secure a 10-7 win. So the teams combined for 17 goals. It was the third meeting of the season, and they had only scored four goals combined in the the previous two meetings. So uh, some pretty wild stuff in Minnesota. The Canucks, they started Casey DeSmith, the backup goalie. And on Monday, I mentioned how if that happened, I was going to lock in the Vancouver Canucks uh, at around plus 123 which were the current odds at North Star Bets. But by the time that uh, that news came out that the Smith would be getting the first start of the back-to-back, it was plus 125. Some sports books even opened the Canucks up around the plus 130 range. So I locked in the Canucks yesterday for 0.75 units. Talked about it on Twitter at plus 125. Really, there's no re- good reason to settle for plus 120 at this point. Since January 1st, Colorado ranks 21st in expected goals per evolving hockey, and they're just scraping by with a 0.25 goal differential per 60 minutes. My model says the Vancouver Canucks have a 46.9% chance of winning with Thatcher Demko between the pipes. I think it'll almost certainly be Demko, obviously. The Smith hung out the dry uh, on Monday. Don't get me wrong, though. This is this is going to be a, a tough test. The Avs are a very tough team to play against and a, a tough team to play uh, on the road against when you are tired. So uh, playing tired in Denver always is very tough. This situation has uh, has been a wash for for the Avalanche this season. They are three and zero when taking on teams who played the night before on home ice. Um, but I think you know, given Vancouver's offensive capabilities, the the Canucks are, are very much in this one, uh, as only five teams have allowed more goals per sixty minutes than the Colorado Avalanche. So Vancouver plus 125 or better, 0.75 units. The Islanders and the Penguins. So even with Jake Gensel out of the Penguins lineup, my model projects 3.2 goals for Pittsburgh and 2.86 goals for the Islanders. Uh, A 56.6% chance that the game will feature at least six goals. So I'm betting over five and a half goals at minus 118. That's at North Star Bets. It's actually the best price in market right now. I'm just going to risk enough to win a half unit. I uh, would like to have Gensel in the lineup. Uh, and and considering that the Penguins are definitely an, an under team. But the Islanders, they do trend toward the over. And there's a lot of familiarity here. Obviously, these are division rivals. Uh, and in fact, since the start of last season, the two, these two teams have met six times. And five out of those six games have featured at least six goals. So there's there's going to be no uh, feeling out process here. These teams are going to get right after it. Um, and uh, I'm on over five and a half at minus 118 to win a half a unit. So we'll add that to the Vancouver Canucks on the money line at plus 125. Two bets 
for Tuesday. Now, the Stars and the Rangers, um, I would have had a little bit of interest in the Stars up around that plus 130 range if both Miro Heskinen and Matt Duchesne were expected to be back in the lineup. Didn't really know what the status of either player was going to be earlier this morning. Uh, Miro Heskinen, of course, missed Monday's game against Boston due to the birth of his child. Forward Matt Duchesne was a very late scratch just before warm-ups. We learned that, that Duchesne would not be in the lineup. But the Stars played really good without Duchesne and Heskinen on Monday. They probably deserved a better fate than the ninth-round shootout loss against the Bruins. Dallas outshot Boston 46-30. to uh, And now we, we know that Heskinen has met up with the team in New York and is expected to be in the lineup tonight when the Stars take on the Rangers. Dallas did call up Logan Stankoven, though. He's going to make his NHL debut, it looks like, which suggests that Matthew Shane will be uh, will be out for at least one more game. So no interest in the Dallas Stars or the New York Rangers for that matter, but my model says the Stars should be a plus 123 underdog. They are currently plus 125 pretty much across the board. Uh, the Predators at Golden Knights. The Vegas Golden Knights have had as many as eight players on injured reserve at one point this season, but they're getting healthier, and it looks like Shea Theodore will be the latest returnee uh, the, the defenseman has missed nearly three months uh, after an upper body surgery, but he was on the ice Monday. The Golden Knights are in action today, so uh, it looks like they were just preparing him for his return today. Of course, the, the Golden Knights got the win over the San Jose Sharks, didn't need to put out a lot to get that one. Um, Jack Eichel, though, was moved to long-term injury reserve on Monday per cap friendly. Uh, the 27-year-old has 19 goals and 44 points in 42 games that's what he racked up before suffering his injury. He's been skating on his own, but there has not really been much of an upside update outside of that. So still a ways away from seeing Jack Eichel back in the lineup. The Preds, of course, they canceled their trip to the Sphere. They stayed home uh, and practiced. Uh, lots, of, lots of talk about that uh, this past week as... Um, the, the, the organization just wasn't happy with how the team was playing, how they were practicing. So they canceled uh, what was supposed to be a, a little bit of a, a vacation before this game uh, with, against the Vegas Golden Knights. They were all going to go and see you 2 at the Sphere, but that didn't happen. So you've got a pissed-off Predators team coming into Vegas on Tuesday. We'll see what that means for the Vegas Golden Knights, but I think the Vegas Golden Knights should be around a minus-139 favorite, which is pretty close to where they are at most sports books. Senators and the Panthers. Ottawa bounced back with a 4-2 win over the Tampa Bay Lightning on Monday after losing 3-2 the, to the Blackhawks in Chicago. Of course, Tampa was also trying to back, bounce back after losing 9-2 to the Florida Panthers. Uh, now the Sens, though, will take on the Panthers, and that's a team that they've only beaten once in the last two seasons. In fact, Florida has actually shut out Ottawa uh, in three of those games over the last two seasons. So this is going to be a really tough test for the, the Sens. Uh, and Sergei Bobrovsky will be in goal for the Florida Panthers, who uh, the model says should be in the minus 245 range. Um, so, yeah, right around where the sportsbooks have that one at right now. Now, looking ahead to Wednesday's games, not a lot going on on Wednesday, just five games on the slate. And right away, the one that sticks out is the Buffalo Sabres. They opened up at minus 115 at North Star Bets. I think they should be closer to minus 130, minus 127 to be exact. And if you look, last time they were in Montreal, they closed in the minus 145 range. So I don't think I'm very far off on that one. I suspect we'll see this one move towards the Sabres. But look, I'm a little bit worried here. Lukanen, uh, sorry, UPL, uh, Ukapeka Lukanen, that is, uh, the Buffalo Sabres goaltender. He's been great lately. He hadn't allowed more than three goals in a game since December 23rd, but he allowed four goals on 15 shots in Monday's 4-3 loss to the Anaheim Ducks. And the Sabres outshot the Ducks 37 to 15. So really, Lukanen helped give that one away. Uh, there's value here on Buffalo at minus 115. Uh, like I said, I mean, it closed in the minus 140s last time, so I doubt it's going to stay here uh, if UPL is between the pipes for the Sabres against Samuel Montembeau. Montembeau has been great this season as well. I'm not high on the Sabres, though. Uh, and I really don't want to get stuck with Dustin Tokarski as my starting goaltender at minus 115. So I'm a little bit worried about that. I talked about it on Monday's show, how the Sabres, you know, they had the Ducks here. They, they lost that game. Now they've got the Canadians and the Blue Jackets up next. But after that, it gets really, really tough. They're going to play the league's best teams uh, over the course of about 10 games. And, 
yeah, it is not going to be easy for the Buffalo Sabres. Strength of schedule going to be updated a little bit later today at CanadaSportsBetting.ca. Um, you know, if people had looked at the Buffalo Sabres' strength of schedule and, and, you know, just seeing what kind of run they have coming up, they wouldn't be talking about the playoffs. They would have never even mentioned that uh, in the second half of the season. After Buffalo's start, um, they are totally out of it, uh, you know, and uh, and – Sure, anything can happen, but you look at their schedule, it's not going to be easy. They are going to uh, probably going to lose a lot of games down the stretch. Um, and uh, and if they don't, I'd say you'd probably be better off backing them on a game-to-game basis because they're going to be some big underdog prices on this Sabres team uh, down the stretch over the next few weeks. And, uh, and yeah, we'll see how that goes for Buffalo. But I'm not going to stick my neck out here like I stuck – my neck out on the Winnipeg Jets uh, on Monday. Got lucky with Connor Hellebuck starting in goal. But, man, what happened to the Winnipeg Jets? Up 3-1. Got the hat trick from uh, from Sean Monaghan. Um, but, uh, but, unfortunately, that's all they got because they lost 6-3. Um, pretty, pretty tough one. Split on Monday, 1-1. One one, lost 0.05 units with uh, the Detroit Red Wings uh, helping out with their uh, half unit winner at plus 115. So yeah, not a lot going on on Monday for me uh, from a betting perspective. Um, And not a hell of a lot going on Tuesday or Wednesday. But like I said, Wednesday, we're going to come back and look ahead to Thursday's NHL games and hopefully definitely find some value bets because it's a big slate Thursday. Uh, and then, of course, we'll be back on Friday looking ahead to uh, to Saturday's games and at, and Friday, of course. But keep it locked here to the Puck Portfolio every weekday. And, uh, and yeah, we'll keep on, keep on keeping on here. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate you all. Drop a like on the video if you have not already. Once again, subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel if you're new here. See you tomorrow.